Chapter 11. Samson just passes the frozen ark and for a minute rests and hunkers down to drink a sip of water and berry wine. He is almost to dress in the land of Riffleham. The elves of the old ways living at Treetop Point in the wilds north address. Just as he re is resting, in, a small pack of wolves run by, scattering, then running past him. For some reason, they are not interested in, in Samson. He puts together a small bit of camp wood from his pack and makes a fire, for it is cold in the north. He sits through a long time, thinking of many things. There are no bandits in the area. It is too close to the elves of the old way. They would root them out and destroy them. He wakes up near dawn and the fire is almost out. He readies himself for Treetop Point, the home of the elves. Later that day, the path, strangely enough, started to change from frozen tundra to humid woods, even as he traveled north. Small ice covered the leaves of the trees, but it was hot a hot day in the land of the elves. Elven magic made the ice scarce. Just as he passes a stump of a caravan, say, just as he passes a stump, a caravan of gypsies and an elf of the human world stop him. Is that you, Samson? By Eon's breath, the old woman is not from his tribe. The the woman is not from his tribe, but knows him, Samson. Be it by a day or many a year, it is good to see you too, Matilda. The woman reaches in her wagon and pulls out a bag for him and gives it to him as a gift. It is full of food and water, among other things. For your needs, Creon, the woman utters. Samson thanks her and looks north. Heading for the elves, are you? The woman inquired. Yes, I am going to ask for their aid in the rebuilding of Ascadia City after Fendrago ravaged it. The elf with them has been quiet the whole time, just standing there, as elves usually are. He breaks the silence and says, Past the gate is Treetop Point. It is guarded by Fade Dragons. Simply speak the password, Creon asks. What might that be? The elf then replies, Leaves fall. Leaves break in the fall. Thank your wizard friend for me, Creon. He saved me from my crazy father in that crazy city. Some like to call Murik, said the woman with a look of happiness. The woman silently signals to leave and the elf and the other men follow. Samson crosses the ark and enters the elven woods of the north. He continues to embark on his journey. He has left most of his weaponry back in high post and he must travel light. Half day's journey and he is in dress to stay until he recovers from the long journey. Meanwhile in the plateau caverns in the Echera Desert, the orc warlord Dane is holding a meeting with all the other orcs of his tribe of the old ways, the Nashers. Brothers, hear me. The world beckons to be ruled by a more innate fist. One orc raises his savage spear and says, Is that time coming? Dane slams his spear into the stone like a madman and faces him with anger. That day is upon us all. For humanity is weak and clings to its weakness like a spoiled child, a child in need of scolding. Dane paces. The first threat is Fendraggle, the mighty South Empire. We have given them the amulet under the guise of the Tempest Guild. Even now, Felgen agents seek it out to the last. It won't be long now. The Great Felgen War will happen, just as I have foreseen. The amulet of Sora is a Felgen artifact of great power. All Felgans want it, and the one who has it would be recognized as King of the Felgans. The Princess of Fendragel has it, and is the leader of all Felgans and doesn't even know it. Dane grabs a spear and launches it in a cage, impelling a bandit prisoner, impelling a, a bandit prisoner through the neck. The caverns shake and roar with orc cheer and fury. Sand trickles down from the walls and top and Dane tilts his head back and lays his arms out. His plan to destroy Fendrekel is in motion and has been for some time, but something may happen that even the mighty Dane has not foreseen. 
Samson is drinking ale in the gray stone tavern in dress, dancing with himself and swinging his sword. He points a sword at the barmaiden and screams, More ale! The woman looks at him with anger and asks, Paying for this one, are you? Creon, drunk, lays a coin purse on the table and gets out enough for gets out enough for four more. Samson remembers his task, being in the middle of the day. He goes to his bed to sleep it off. When night falls, it starts to snow a bit, and he peers out of, uh, of his window. His room is upstairs. His door creaks open, and a shadow steps in from the lit room. It is the bar woman. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. I have some business to discuss with you. You seem like a very capable man, by my judgment. I suppose it is private enough in here at this hour. Let me get straight to the point. The woman says this is... This then walks over to Samson, still laying down, and sits in the chair beside his bed. There is a cult growing here in Dress called the Ethanites. King of Dress, Marco, King Marco II, is secretly going around looking for adventurers to help stop them. They are making a foothold in the north now. They have some kind of book that gives them speed. The woman says to Samson without missing a beat, Samson launches himself sideways out of the bed. Ethan the Black? Lancaster's old student? Samson runs out of the inn, smashing his hand on the side of the doorway, running toward the castle outside the town. Once he gets close enough, he catches his breath and stops, then walks, putting his sword away. He looks all around him, and he slowly makes his way to castle dress. Ethan's legacy lives on somehow. Through these Ethanites. Samson thanks to himself. Lancaster will want to know about this. Samson enters castle dress, silk banners hanging from the side walls, and silver chalices and forks on tables. I request an audience with King Marco II, Samson says to a guard sitting at one of the tables. Very well, but I am watching you, the guard says back. Samson walks up to the throne and kneels to one knee and gets back up, thrusting himself out with his sword. Speak, adventurer, says Mark, says King Marco II. Samson puts his sword back and says, These Ethanites, I know someone who could stop them. I know the former Archmage of White Tower. He was Ethan's master before Ethan got turned into a lich by Black Tower. Marco II flinches and says, This is news to me still. If you know something... Who, someone who can help, I am all ears. I will send this person a messenger crow from my court wizard. Where is he? Samson replies, last I heard he was staying with the Tempest Guild in the South Seas. Very well then, I will see to it right away. Will you be joining this mysterious hero of yours? As Mar asked Marco II. No, King, I must decline. I have business with the elves soon. Besides, it is a very personal matter for Lancaster, I am sure. He is very capable. He saved my city from a dragon and fought for the freedom of my township against Darkin. Samson, I, Samson bows and whips his red cloak to the side as he walks away, out the door, into the streets outside. The good king failed to mention that the Ethanites had been robbing tombs and kidnapping a few people. No one knows what gives them power or who leads them, if anyone. Back at, back at Mirasami's castle, she has fallen ill. Renault stays by her side as she lays in bed, her amulet on the table beside her. Out of superstition, they do not know what is causing her to be sick. I know what made me sick, Renault, she says softly. Renault replies, what, my lady? She smiles and says, our love made me ill. Renault looks down and says, oh, I see. You know this to be true? She turns and says, No, but I suspect it. I believe it is this amulet. Yersami squints her eyes and looks at Renault with a smile and says, Go get Jonther back. Reason with him. Find him and get him back. We need him for this. Renault says, Sure thing. Just let me get some things before I depart. I will also tell the servants to keep an eye on you and stay close to you to help you out. 
Renault later that day asked around the castle for anyone knowing where Junther went. The groundskeeper, Edbert, knew and said, hm, Him? He, he is a hedge wizard for the bandits close to town. Renault thanks him and leaves town on foot with a sword and a heavy silk bag draped on his back. Renault grabs a torch from the wall near the castle door and proceeds on the road leading away from Castle Fendragle. He will be brave and travel by night. For his love, he will do anything. Later that night, Edward sneaks into his room while she is sleeping, and he whispers very lightly, Get her. All of a sudden, she is woke up by some, something attacking her, choking her and punching her. It feels small. She reaches over to her table and grabs the necklace, trying to put it on, but she instead holds it to her chest. Just give up, princess, Edward says. I'm taking over and there's nothing you can do. Minto, appear now. All of a sudden, an imp appears in her bed, laughing at her and rubbing its tiny hands together. This pause gives her a chance to put on the necklace, and she does. What is that? Edward asks. The princess yells, nothing. Now get out of my room. I'm afraid I cannot do that, princess. My master wants that amulet. Give it to me now, and you will be spared. She gently bites her lip and takes off the amulet giving it to Edbert. Kill her, Edbert says as he turns around and walks out of the room. The imp smiles an evil smile and says, Well, you heard him. Goodbye. She screams and puts her hands and arms up against her head and the imp launches a massive fireball at her head. It does nothing. The imp cannot believe it. Immune to imp magic? You cannot be serious. He says, jumping on the bed. He's gone. I'm here. What now? The imp says, looking around with the crazy enthusiasm. Hey, maybe you can free me. The imp says with glee. You know those enslavers can't see us imps, even though they have us in sorcery. They can locate us, though. Just tell him that you killed me and I will hide under the bed until you take care of him. Princess Mirasami frowns and says, You tried to kill me. The imp snarks. I had no choice. Now deal with him and I will be your servant and friend. An imp is a great ally to have within the household. Trust me. He says. All right, fine. I will have Renault take care of Edward once he returns. Until then, stay hidden under my bed and take care not to cause trouble. The imp laughs one good laugh and teleports under her bed. A path of clear heat looking smoke making its way to the darkness under the bed. I will be quiet as a lamb, your... Your Majesty. The imp says, Princess Mirasami smiles, coughing, and says, Mm-hmm, all right. A little bit later, Edbert has made it to the bandit camp where Junther is. Since he knew a shortcut. Here is the amulet, Edbert says to Junther. Bandit sleeping by the fire. Junther snatches the amulet and hops on a stolen black and brown horse and speeds off toward the north road and passes a Fendragle sign broken on its bottom. He makes his way to he makes his way for Dannon McBride to give him the amulet, amulet of Sora. They are to meet at Darkin's hideout near High Post. Just as Edward puts his hand over his forehead watching Junther speed off, a sword goes through his stomach from behind. It is Renault. He saw that he was holding Mirasami's amulet earlier and now asks, Where is she? What have you done to the princess, you fool? Edward coughs up blood and smiles, saying, The imp probably turned her to ashes. Why? A look of dread comes over Renault's face and he looks for a horse to steal. One is left, but the commotion has woken up the three bandits sleeping and they are already standing there in their leather armor ready to kill Renault. Smiling, devious smiles. Swords and axes collide, and in the moment, Renault makes his way to the horse and climbs on it, riding off. But not before one of the bandits cut, cut, cuts its thigh with an axe. Luckily, the wound is not very bad, and the horse is just a little shaken from it. He makes it to the castle, since it is not very far from the camp, and twirls. His arms in a circle, halting the horse, yelling, "The princess is in danger!" The two guards run in with Renault to, to Mirasami's room to find her resting. 
It is okay, Guardsman. She is fine. Renault says with relief. She lies on her bed with her arms behind her head, leans to her right towards the doorway, smiles, and says, We have a little friend under my bed. A puzzled look comes over the guards, but Renault asks, Whatever do you mean, my love? The imp launches out from under the bed, sliding out on its back and singing some strange song. Why me, of course, the imp exclaimed. The guards try to stab the floor with their sword where it is but miss every time. The imp laughing. <coughs> you know, if Mirasami exclaims, This imp is my servant now, supposing you took care of Edward. Renault looks at the imp back. And back at Mirasami and says, I did. The imp thrills, says, Then I am free. In return, I shall work for Fendraggle from now on. She is immune to magic anyway. Or didn't you know? One of the guardsmen sheaths his sword and says, Yeah, yeah, we know. Mirasami then gets up out of bed and stands up, giving Renault a hug. I am feeling much better, love. Did you recover the amulet from Edward? Renault sighs and says, No, lady. Junther took off with it on horseback. He was working with him. Very well, it matters not, she says as she runs her hand through her hair on her right. Mirasami walks out of the room and tells Renault, I am going to see Aaron. Has he been fed and taken care of? Renault replies, of course, my lady. We have a person devoted solely to the task of taking care of Aaron. Good, she says back. He is kind and special to me, like you are, my love. Renault laughs and simply replies, yes. Night becomes morning, and the rabble of the castle knew nothing of what transpired. The animal is now on its way to, to enslave her hands, and the tides turn in the shore and lands of Fendragon, and the southeast of Felwyn, the, south, the southeast jungle. <coughs>